The following are stories taken from theholders.org. Read by Russell Stroud. If you liked what you heard, consider buying me a coffee at ko-fi.com slash Radio Russell. The Holder of the End In any city, and any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of the End. Should a look of childlike fear come over the worker's face, you will then be taken to a cell in the building. It will be in a deep, hidden section of the building. All you will hear is the sound of someone talking to themselves echo in the halls. It is in a language you will not understand. But your very soul will feel unspeakable fear. Should the talking stop at any time, stop and quickly say aloud, I'm just passing through, I wish to talk. If you still hear silence, flee, leave. Do not stop for anything, do not go home, do not stay at an inn. Just keep moving and sleep where your body drops. You will know in the morning if you've escaped. If the voice in the hall comes back after you utter those words, continue on. Upon reaching the cell, all you will see is a windowless room with a person in the corner speaking an unknown language and cradling something. The person will only respond to one question. What happens when they all come together? The person will then stare into your eyes and answer your question in horrifying detail. Many go mad in that very cell. Some disappear soon after the meeting, and a few end their lives, but most do the worst thing, and look upon the object in the person's hands. You will want to do so as well, but be warned that if you do, your death will be one of cruelty and unrelenting horror. Your death will be in that room, by that person's hands. That object is one of 538. They must never come together. Never. The Holder of the Beginning in any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask the clerk for permission to visit someone who calls herself the holder of the beginning. A small smile will work its way over their mouth as if to say, you fool. You will then be taken down a long hallway, long enough that you would expect it to lead outside of the building, yet in clear violation of the laws of space and physics, it instead leads deep into the heart of the institution. The hall will be forever silent, even if you try to make noise. Screams will die before leaving your mouth, and footsteps will be muffled. In lieu of speech, your guide will simply point to the door. Beyond it lies a cozy room, filled with a pleasant yet unidentifiable perfume. At the room's center, a beautiful woman holds her empty arms as if cradling something. This room will remain silent as the hallway that led to it, until you ask a singular question. Why were they separated? The woman will then explain, in excruciating detail, every horrific event in history. Every beating. Every war. Every rape. Every killing. No travesty in the history of the universe will escape your ears. When she finishes, all will fall silent, and you'll be free to leave. It is up to you to do what you will with this information. That woman is Object 2 of 538. It is up to you if they should be joined or not. The Holder of Eternity In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of Eternity. A sigh might escape the worker as they look upon you with the utmost pity. They will take you down a flight of stairs that you might expect to lead to the basement. They don't. As you press deeper and deeper into the underbelly of the institution, you'll begin to hear a chorus of screams. At first, it will be barely audible, as if originating from a point a great distance away. But as you approach the end of the hallway, the screams will grow clearer and more thunderous until they drone so loudly as to consume all other noises. The din will quickly become so painful that you'll feel the unrelenting urge to claw at your own ears to escape it. Resist this impulse. The worker, stoically enduring the cacophony, will show you a door. As swiftly as they can, they will unlock it and run, leaving you alone in this cramped, dark hallway. This will be your last chance to run. If you decide to continue, open the door. The piercing wail will then end abruptly, leaving your ears ringing. The room you will enter will be coated in an almost tangible darkness that consumes all but the far wall. Manacled to that wall is an emaciated figure covered in raw lashes. 
He will stare directly at you with a maniacal grin plastered to his face, seemingly undisturbed by his festering wounds and the scalpel rammed into his chest. The only way to save yourself from this man's dark designs is to ask, who created them? He will then cackle in a manner befitting the death throes of an animal before responding. His will be the most horrific tale you have ever heard. Beyond such primitive concepts as pain and death, it will delve deep into the very essence of evil. Those of weak mind would go mad hearing it. When he finishes, it will be up to you to release this man from his terrible burden. Remove the scalpel, and he will shudder once in agony before falling silent forever. That scalpel is Object 3 of 538. It is up to you if the rest should be protected or destroyed. The Holder of Nothing In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls herself the Holder of Nothing. Should a look of sheer, primal disgust mar the worker's expression, you will then be taken to a separate building, one that appears to be an old wooden outhouse. Inside will be a seemingly endless corridor that far exceeds the length of that outhouse. The corridor will be completely silent, attempting to make any sound at the wrong time is a grievous, lamentable mistake. You will notice the lights in the corridor getting brighter and brighter as you make your way down toward the end. Eventually, you'll find yourself blinded by their brilliance. If, at any point, the lights go out, quickly shout out, No! Stop! What you're doing is wrong! while backing away. If the lights do not come back on, bolt for the door you came in through, it should still be open. Hopefully, you aren't far enough down the hallway for it to close on you. If it does close, an eternity in hell will be preferable to what you will suffer. If the lights come back on, continue walking down the corridor. At the end of the hall lies a cell. The worker will open its door for you while glaring at you in disgust. Inside the cell will be a mad pastiche of colors, arranged in several harlequin-like formations. You must not be distracted by them, for at the center of the room is a naked young woman, slathered in blood and bound by strips of human sinew, and you will be better off not knowing what will happen if you take your eyes off of her face for even a moment. Focus on her and ask, what were they when they were one? She will look you in the eye and speak the answer in incredible detail. It will be unlike anything you have ever heard, leaving you on the verge of both ecstasy and agony. It is not uncommon for a seeker to lose themselves in the euphoria, but you mustn't let your focus break, and you must take special care not to look upon her tattooed chest. Your mind will tempt you to gaze upon it, but you must resist, for if you fail, she will flay you alive and add your mutilated flesh to her bindings, and you will remain trapped with her, fully conscious, for the rest of time. That tattoo is Object 4 of 538. They desire to be one again, and they mustn't. The Holder of Light In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, close your eyes and ask to visit someone who calls himself the holder of light. You'll be led to a single door leading to a long, winding hallway, and then told to open your eyes. Open the door. The hallway beyond it will be pitch black, but narrow enough for you to feel the walls with outstretched arms and guide yourself forward. If, at any point during your trek down the hall, it is suddenly bathed in light, shut your eyes immediately and quickly make your way back to the door you came in through. If your eyes stay open for more than a second, what you will see will force you to instinctively tear them out. If, on the other hand, the lights stay off long enough for you to navigate the entire corridor, you will reach another door. Look down. If you can see any light escaping from the crack beneath the door, flee immediately, for what you seek is not there. If no light escapes the next room, then carefully turn the doorknob and enter. The room beyond will be completely dark, aside from a single dimly lit candle at its center. The faint light it emits will reveal the outline of a cloaked, motionless figure huddled over it. There is only one question that he will respond to. What can protect us from them? Say anything else, and the man will tear out your eyes and force you to take his place under the cloak for the rest of eternity. If you ask the proper question, a piercing scream will ring out from the candle, and a series of lights will illuminate the room, revealing images of the most horrifying thoughts, fantasies, and memories experienced by sentient minds throughout history. Most people cannot handle this event, 
turning violently insane or perishing instantly at the sight of such horrors. If you should somehow manage to survive the ordeal, the cloaked man will rise slowly and put his hand to your head, turning your gaze to meet his youthful face. Stare directly into his empty, gaping eye sockets, for if you look away from that terrible sight, you will be stranded in this room, forever forgotten by time itself. Do not turn to look as he opens your right hand and places a small, round object upon your palm. As that object touches your hand, you'll find yourself able to ignore even the most fearsome agonies, unless you're in the process of obtaining another object, for the pains you feel then are far beyond any worldly suffering. Know that even this newfound power will never help you cope with the horrifying images you have witnessed in that room. They will be burned into your memory for all eternity. The eye you hold in your hand is object 5 of 538. The awakening has begun, and they must not be brought together. The Holder of Song In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls herself the Holder of Song. You will then be guided to a long staircase that spirals higher than the building stands. At the stair summit is a door. As you open the door, a sudden wave of heat will pour out from the hallway beyond it and wash over you. Proceed down the hallway. As you walk, the air around you will grow increasingly frigid. When you feel as if you're encased in ice, you must stand perfectly still, remain silent, and listen. If, after a few seconds pass, you hear a baby crying, turn and run. No harm will befall you, but the infant's cry will follow you wherever you go. If you hear it for the rest of your life, count yourself lucky. If and when it stops, your firstborn child will die. If you do not hear a baby's cry, wait for the hallway to grow warm once more, and then proceed to the door at its end. Enter. The room beyond will be awash in green light. At its center will be an old woman turning the handle of a silent music box. Her legs have both been severed at the knees. When you speak to her, you must look her in the eyes. She hides a spear fashioned from the bones of her legs. Break eye contact, and she will impale you with it and leave you to bleed to death in a seemingly unending agony. She will respond to only one question. What is the song they used to play? The woman will begin to sing in a language not of this world. Her melody will be the most beautiful one you've ever heard, bringing peace and serenity to your mind, body, and soul. You will find yourself vividly imagining a band of carefree children playing and singing, innocent as can be, and within minutes, the scene will eventually take a horribly sinister turn. The children will begin to fight each other, and their conflict will quickly escalate to the most brutal, lethal violence you can conceive of. They will impale each other on wooden poles, disembowel each other with sharp rocks, and even rip flesh from bone with their bare hands. You will witness these children, now merely tattered doppelgangers of themselves, spreading death and destruction more horrific than you could ever imagine on your own. You will see a naked boy, drenched in blood, singing with delight as he runs through a hellish wasteland pursued by unspeakable monsters. They will overtake him and utterly destroy him, the song still issuing forth from his shredded lips all the while. Yet, inexplicably, you will remain calm and peaceful even as you watch this unspeakable brutality. When these horrific visions end, an intense pain will stab at your chest. Your heart will feel like it's about to explode. Do not let the agony break your focus, and do not break eye contact with the old woman, lest you invite a fate so horrible that an exploding heart seems lovely by comparison. If you remain steadfast in your gaze, the pain will eventually cease. The woman will stand up, though with your eyes still focused on hers, you will know not how, and place the music box in your hands. The music box is object 6 of 538. When its song plays again, they will all come together. The Holder of the Path In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of the Path. The worker there will try his best to keep a look of indifference on his face while handing you a key, which, as he will explain, belongs to an unused supply closet in the building. If only it were that simple. 
Upon locating and unlocking the correct door, you will find yourself staring out onto a narrow, winding road suspended in an endless void, the sight only occasionally obstructed by the massive outlines of things best left undescribed. To fall off of the path is to be thrown out of reality itself. A nightmarish eternity of inconceivable horror awaits anyone who either stumbles into the void by their own error or is dragged off of the path by the timeless monstrosities that reside on the outskirts of creation. If you should ever feel as if you are being watched while traveling through this piece of oblivion, the best chance you have is to immediately freeze in place and hold your breath. Continue to do so until your audience either loses interest or moves in to claim you. If the latter should occur, feel free to scream as hard as you want, though your screams will fall on deaf ears. At the end of the path lies a door that leads to a small dirt-caked room. Propped up against the room's far wall is a heavily emaciated corpse. What's left of its skin has long since blackened with necrosis. Approach it and ask one question. How did they acquire guardians? In response to your query, the corpse will begin to stir. A subtle red glow will emanate from its eye sockets as it lifts its head and begins to whisper the long and macabre history of the holders. It will speak of unholy pacts and unspeakable atrocities. Within time, its tail will touch upon every form of evil known to man or God, and a few forms that neither can comprehend. Furthermore, if told the title of any holder, the corpse will reveal that holder's history and the meaning of the object that it protects. Well, almost any holder. The holder of the path will never go into detail about itself. This is because the ghoul hopes that you will not question why it seems to be lacking an object. Truth be told, the ominous glow from within the ghoul's eye sockets is actually the shining light of the object that was somehow sealed inside of its skull. That object is 7 of 538. Its holder will do anything to keep you away from it. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the holder of wealth. The worker will raise one eyebrow as if puzzled by your request. Ask a second time and the worker will shrug and take you across the street where an opulent mansion awaits. If you are observant by nature, you may notice that the mansion was not there when you started your quest. Its owner would rather you didn't think about such things. Inside the front door will lie a grand staircase, spiraling up across the foyer. The walls will be covered with fine paintings, and a large marble statue will rest on a pedestal by the base of the stairs. The statue's eldritch features will evoke an image of a truly horrific beast, at once both alien and evil. Admire it all you want, but don't touch it, unless you wish to awaken the starved monster. Ascend the staircase. As long as you don't touch anything, you'll be safe. Don't panic. At the top of the stairs, you'll find a small wooden door. Its plain and unassuming appearance is a sharp contrast to its decadent surroundings. It will open on its own for you, as long as you are not afraid. Past it, you will see a man with a pointed goatee and short, cropped, gelled hair standing behind a large mahogany desk. His suit is made of both human flesh and Italian silk. He may speak, and at grand length he will talk about his amazingly beautiful house and the lovely statue of his concubine resting downstairs. Do not interrupt him, and do not answer any questions he may ask. When he is finished, steal yourself, and confidently ask, May I have my salary? He will proceed to explain to you in great detail the value of life. He will talk of things worse than death. He will tell you exactly what he expects you to do. The fabulous interior of the room will rot away, and the floor will turn from French weave to feces. The man's appearance will become cyclopic and unimaginably horrendous. He will fish out a small banknote from the pockets of his human suit and hand it to you. That note is object 8 of 538. Its holder is counting on you to spend it. The Holder of Wisdom In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of Wisdom. The desk clerk will chuckle and guide you to an empty room. They will hand you a key and tell you to wait some time in the room until you hear a bell ring.
When it rings, you'll have to lock the door through which you entered, wait until a second ring, and unlock it. Once those instructions have been carried out, the door will open all by itself and reveal a long hallway with every conceivable color painted onto the walls, ceiling, and floor. Follow the hallway until you hear a little girl singing. Stop, close your eyes, and stay where you are until the girl finishes the song. If you fail to remain perfectly still, run. Run back to the door through which you came as fast as you can. Jump through the window of the room where you waited earlier, and you might live. Should you be unable to reach the window in time, you'll be dragged back into the hallway by something that is definitely not a little girl. You'll be pulled by this horror until time itself ends, forever feeling the pain of every soul dragged to an early grave. If, on the other hand, you manage to remain perfectly still until the song ceases, you'll be free to either turn around and leave forever, or venture further into this realm. If you prefer the latter course of action, walk deeper into the hallway until you reach a human-shaped door. Open it with the same key that was given to you earlier. Step inside and close the door behind you. In the middle of the room, you will see a desk with a bright candle. Behind the desk is a man whose face isn't visible behind the shine of the candle. Approach, but always keep the flame between you and the man's face, for if you witness what he looks like, your gaze will be fixed on his until your own hands have removed every inch of skin from your bones. Stop when you are five steps away from the desk. The man will raise his hand and gesture you to come closer, but do not step any further than this. Close your eyes and ask him one question. Who will bring them back together? You will hear the man rise from his chair and begin to pray in a language you will not understand. After two minutes, you will hear a name. If you hear Anubis, then you best utter your own prayers in the short time you will have to do so. But if it is Thor you hear, then you may open your eyes. You will see the man's severed head laying on the desk, still speaking. After another three minutes, his prayer will cease, and he will tell you how you will die. He will describe every minute detail of your horrible death, and you will be unable to move or react while he explains your end. Lastly, he will describe the one who will steal your life away from you, and go into such detail as to why it is necessary that you yourself will question which would be worse, you being murdered, or you still being allowed to continue to live. Eventually, the head will finish its ghastly tale. It is Object 9 of 538. It is up to you what you will do with the knowledge of your death. For now, it is inevitable. In any city... In any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit a man who calls himself the Holder of Ambition. The sound that escapes the mouth of the worker will be so slight and betray so little reaction that at first you may not even be sure your words were heard. All doubt will be settled when they guide you toward a stairway lit by many windows. At the top of these stairs, the worker will leave you to continue your journey alone. You'll find yourself standing at the beginning of an eerily calm hallway. Walk to the end. In all likelihood, you will encounter a shadow that moves along the wall. Do not follow it, for it is the one thing that will lead you to a place you do not wish to go. A place filled with your silent fears and failures from which you cannot return. No matter what shape the shadow takes, and no matter how it eases and taunts your dreams with the greatest of your desires and hopes, do not even let it tempt your gaze, let alone your feet. If you make it to the end of the hallway without losing sight of your goal, if you make it to the end of the hallway without losing sight of your goal, you will find an open doorway with no locks, bolts, or restraints. A soft light bathes the floor in front of the opening. This is your one and only chance to leave without facing the holder of ambition or collecting his object. If that is the course of action you wish to take, then walk directly back the way you came without attempting to peek around or into the other doors, lest you discover what that seductive shadow hides. Beyond the doorway lies a room bathed in an artificial light cast by high windows that cover each wall's expanse. At the room's center stands a tall, healthy man, standing naked and looking out into the light. His body is covered in unaccountable tattoos and scars, only his face is recognizable as unaltered human flesh. You might be tempted to look where he looks, in search of the object of his focus. Feel free, but you will see nothing and learn nothing. 
The man will not react to anything other than the question, what joins them together? When asked, he will turn to look you in the eyes, meet his gaze, but know that if you are not prepared, if there is even the slightest doubt of your intentions, then you will lose yourself in his soulless eyes for an eternity. If, on the other hand, your gaze is an honest one, then he will begin to speak in a low voice. His tone will be a comical one, his tale told as if they meant nothing at all. But you must not miss a word, for this story is your preparation. Listen carefully to his tale and remember every detail. When the man finishes speaking, he will bring his hands to his chest and remove the sutures from one of his more noticeable scars. As the stitches come out, he will bleed profusely and fatally. When the last of his sutures have come out, he will offer them to you, uttering his final words through his own gurgling blood. Choosing to seek leads to an inevitable fate. The clump of sutures is object 10 of 538. How you use them depends on what you hear. The Holder of Life In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of Life. The worker will then try to suppress a groan, and you will have to ask again. He will then lead you to an operating room that looks just like any other you might or might not have seen in your life. The worker will then give you a scalpel and then leave you alone in the room, locking the door behind him. You will have to wait, wait for almost an hour. Then the door will open and several people will enter the room, including a pregnant woman. The woman will lie down on the operating table. The other people, who will look like doctors, will prepare everything for the child's birth. While they do that, you will be able to ask the woman one question. Ask, how can they be reassembled? Say nothing else, or the doctors will begin to skin and disassemble you. You will be fully conscious while they do this. If you have asked the right questions, the woman will begin to scream. The child is about to be born. You will have to wait until it's over, and one of the doctors will give you the child, moving its mouth, but without sound coming from its lips. As soon as he finishes talking and smiles, you'll have to throw the child to the ground and ram the scalpel into its head, or else it will smash your rib cage and rip your heart out with inhuman strength. If you have thrown the child to the ground in time, it will, despite the scalpel in its head, answer the question you have asked earlier. It will speak with a demonic voice that might drive you mad. While it's speaking, the other people in the room will vanish without leaving a trace. After the child finishes talking, it will simply die, and the door of the room will unlock. You are now free to go if you've not been driven mad by the voice. The dead baby is object 11 of 538. Dare you not remove the scalpel? The Holder of Catastrophe In any city, in any country, go to any abandoned amusement park you can enter. Find the largest roller coaster in the park, no matter its condition. Take a seat on the far left side of the first cart, and then close your eyes and whisper, I wish to see the holder of catastrophe. You will feel the coaster start to move, yet you cannot open your eyes, or you'll find yourself moving through an endless void which you will never escape. The coaster will then slowly start to head up for what seems to be ages as you listen to the rumbling of the tracks. You will then hear voices whisper at you and ask you to save them, yet you must not respond to them or they will take you away to the same void to which they belong. The voices will stop speaking to you, and the cart will come to a stop. With your eyes still closed, you must grasp the bar in the cart as tightly as you possibly can, or you'll be left behind forever. After you do so, you'll feel yourself plummeting straight down at impossible speeds. The air around you will start to grow cold, and continues as it feels as if you are freezing, as you sense the cart around you disappear, you must keep hold of the bar, as it's the only thing keeping you attached to reality. Abruptly, you will stop, drop the bar, and sit still with your eyes closed until you hear the sound of a carnival fanfare in the distance, and only then can you open your eyes, to which you'll be greeted by a large pinstriped circus tent a few yards in front of you, surrounded by meadows and happy people, young and old. You must walk towards the tent, staring at the small entrance which is shrouded by darkness. As you continue walking, the scenery around you will start morphing. Slowly, the meadow dies. The carnival music slows and bends in pitch until it starts to sound twisted and demonic. 
The people decay in the very spots they stand. They will scream in agony and ask you to help them, yet you cannot look directly at them or you will meet the same fate as these illusions. You must continue forward until you finally reach the dark entrance. Walk forward and allow yourself to be swallowed by the darkness, yet do not stop or look back, as if you do either, you will never find an exit. Continue your walk into the void until you see a dim light in the distance and start to hear the sobbing of a man. Follow these two signs as you hear the crying of the man grow louder until you can see the light is coming from a door in the darkness. When you walk toward the door, you will be greeted by a cold cement cell. In the far left corner, you will see the crying man, dressed as a circus clown, covering his face with a small diary. You must slowly approach him, as to not aggravate him, until he is right by your feet. Sit down next to him and ask, What do we have to lose? The clown will then read you an excerpt from the diary through his sobs. The writings in detail describe the demise of millions of innocents, and the forces that so cruelly and coldly carried out this act. As he reads, illusions will appear around you, and in the sight of your vision you will see every death of every person in the story, many of which were slaughtered, many of which were taken by disease. However, you must keep looking at the clown, as if you lose sight of him, you will be stuck in this illusion, and you will become part of the story yourself. After he is done, he will stop crying. He will lower the book from in front of his face, revealing that he has suffered the same decay as the illusions which you had seen before. He will hand the book to you, which you must accept. He warns that you cannot read the diary yourself, or else you will be driven mad. He will then whisper, When the stakes are high, best to play the clown. As the rest of his body starts to decay, as well as the room around you, you must close your eyes one more time, keeping hold of the book, and count to exactly twelve seconds before opening them. When you do, you will find yourself in the same seat of the roller coaster in which you began. The diary is object 12 of 538. These events must never be allowed to occur again. The Holder of Darkness In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask with no hesitation to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of Darkness. The worker will mock you, but you have to stay as calm as possible. Keep asking him until he stops denying and withdraws from his counter to guide you through the corridors. As his behavior changes radically, stay on guard, for if you start hearing one single tiny sinister hiss, you should turn around and flee as far as you can, covering your ears, because the time was bad. If you do not escape in time, the faint sound will turn into a dreadful growling that will soon merge into a continuous shriek of sheer pain until madness floods you and leaves you to die in a deafening agony. If the warden remains silent, he will lead you to a closed door with neither handles nor lock. As he pushes it open effortlessly, you will see an ascending winding staircase that can't possibly lead to any upper floor of the establishment. The door will close behind you and you will not be able to push it back. Past this point, climb and do not turn back, or you will fall into a bottomless pit waiting for living prey to chew upon. Do not count the steps, for knowing how many there are will drive you to insanity. One will then creak, and at that point you should stop. Another door should appear on your left. If it's on your right, then pray for a swift passing. Enter slowly into the room, and a blinding, obscuring darkness shall descend upon you. You'll be required to walk straight forward, for even straying slightly will lead you to be devoured by the roaming and unknown creatures observing you with blinded and purulent eyes. You will know you have arrived when coldness grips you. At that very moment, freeze, or you will die by the hands of the holder who is standing right in front of you. In complete darkness, even closing your eyes will not prevent you from this horrid appearance. It will form into your mind in the most outrageous monster ever conceived, and madness will try to creep into your brain as worms over a decayed corpse. His fulminating breath and constant mumbling will be enough to make you cry, but be advised not to utter anything louder than a weeping, for you might wake what must not be awakened. The only question you will be able to whisper without being torn apart will be, what do they fear? You will feel movements all around you, as shudders animate your opponents. You will hear what nameless and incurable diseases will strike the world if they were to be frightened, the countless terrors their own fright will unleash on those with a weaker mind than theirs. 
Amidst the atrocious enumeration of the endless sores the world will suffer, you might hear the simplest, almost ridiculous, yet implacable and certain truth they all fear. Do not move again. When your head is about to implode, it will stop. If you are still able to move, you'll find a door in front of you which leads you outside of the ward. There, in the open, in the grass, a broken hourglass will wait for you. You're free to pick it up. It is object 13 of 538. Your knowledge of their fears is up to you to share, but you may not want to use it as a weapon against them. In any city, in any country, venture across the highways and lonely roads until you reach the city's bottom rung. Walk among the ones society has cast away, beggars and poor picked raw by the demands of those better off. Should you come across a scruffy man under a large oak tree holding a bottle of liquor and a paper bag, his shirt sweat-stained and his pants muddied, do not be afraid to ask him if he knows of the one who calls itself the holder of the adversary. More than likely, he will smile knowingly at you, like an old friend with whom you've just shared an inside joke. Do not be alarmed. The man knows of the one you search for. The less fortunate of us often know things we will never dream of. He will guide you to a manhole and casually slide the metal lid off with one grimy boot. Tossing you a small flashlight which flickers precariously, he'll urge you down into the darkness. Once inside the putrid womb of the sewage system, he'll come to realize that it bears no unpleasant scent. No scent whatsoever, in fact. But turning on the flashlight and gazing at your surroundings, you'll notice you're in a round room. On all the walls will hang partially decomposed bodies, their owners forever suspended in a state of half-awareness, feeling all the pain and horror of a body withering and rotting around them. Corpses litter the floors, and you may notice that one nearly touches you. Do not shrink back. To show cowardice would invite no creature or entity that you would do well to know. Once you have observed your surroundings, the smell will arrive. It will be the most awful thing you could imagine. Human and animal excrement, sulfur, rotting bodies, burning flesh. You'll want to claw your nose from your face, and the watering of your eyes will nearly blind you. But do not cower, do not run, and resist the urge to vomit. You will find a thought in your head, unbidden. We are the remains of the ones who could not face the adversary. There is no source of this whisper, though it may curl around you as if carried by the stench itself. Suddenly, the bodies will rupture and burst one by one, releasing more of the horrible stench and bathing you in rotted bodily fluids and slimy chunks of human refuse. The corpses will then sink to the floor, and what rises from the slurry is a creature of pure beauty. Man, woman, or something else entirely, it depends on you yourself. It will not be possible to shake your gaze from this gorgeous, naked human until you realize the creature is an idealized caricature of you. Confident, heart-achingly gorgeous, smiling a gentle, patient smile, it will be everything that you yourself could ever desire to become. You'll be overcome by a sudden jealousy, a total anger, a need to annihilate this perfect you. Do not give in, no matter how strong the temptation. If you do, you are doomed to the adversary's wrath, the eternal torment of the damned you have witnessed prior. There is only one question you must ask the exquisite creature. What could they destroy? The holder of the adversary will laugh at you melodically, condescendingly, and will explain to you as though you are a small, stupid child exactly the answer to your question. It will spare you no details, even the most horrific. Though horrifying, the story will be interesting and calming to listen to, and you will find yourself absorbed in a childlike fascination with the holder. You may liken its story to one told to you by a loved one or a guide when you were a child, and you will know that you now have the key to defeating the adversary, that which the damned could not acquire. At the end of the story, the holder will ask, smiling pleasantly, What will you do now, my child? If it asks you anything else or tells you something different, your fate is sealed, and when you eventually emerge from the sewer, the ragged people you have encountered will descend upon you like ravenous animals and tear you apart with tooth and nail, feeding on your body. There is no escape, only the knowledge that it will happen. Regardless of your fate, the holder will place an object in your palm and close your hand around it. You mustn't open your hand until you are free of this place, it will say, as a fitting goodbye. Now you must turn and leave and do not look back. Once you escape the sewer, and if you are lucky, you may open your fingers. 
What you will find there is a green plastic army man toy. That toy is Object 14 of 538. It understands how to defeat your greatest foe and must never be allowed to join the rest. The Holder of the Past In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of the Past. At the last syllable of your sentence, his eyes should open wide and stare at you as if he was attempting to see past your skin into your soul. Do not ask any questions, because he won't speak to you, and in the case that he does, you shall wish he hadn't. He will take you down a long hallway, and you will walk with him for what will seem like hours. Stare straight ahead the entire time, for if you look at the floor, walls, or ceiling of the hallway, you will run into a dead end, and the worker will pursue you with a hellish bloodlust until you are completely disemboweled. After exactly 350 paces, the worker will stop, turn around, and pull a watch out of his pocket. He will turn the dial backward one hour, and at that point, you will have one hour to complete your task. If you don't, there are no words to describe your fate. The lights will go out for exactly three seconds, and when they turn back on, you will be in a room with no doors and a red-tinted skylight shaped like a pentagram. This will cast a blood-red star in the middle of the room, where a splintered cherry table with two seats will be. Sitting at the seat closest to you, look up. Look down again, and a man with long, dirty black hair will be face down on the table. He will answer to one question. Where did he once stand? The man will speak not of a place that exists on any map, but will describe the room in a painfully grotesque detail. Pay very close attention. He will enumerate exactly how many of what horrible object hang from spears protruding from the walls. You will have the rest of the hour to find the room and sit in his throne. If you fail, I suggest you become armed. Heavily. His throne is object 15 of 538. If brought together, he may once again return. The Holder of the Future In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to see someone who calls himself the Holder of the Future. Do not follow if the attendant offers to show you the way. He is not the true guide and will lead you into madness. The true guide will fall silent and hand you a sheet of paper on which the way forward is written in lines of blood and fire. Walk forward, concentrating on the writing. If your focus doesn't waver, you will pass through both desk and man to find yourself in a long, disused hallway. It may once have seemed opulent, full of color and promise, but the walls are now stained and the carpet is black and filthy. As you pass through the hall, images will flicker in previously unseen windows. It may seem that, from the corner of your eye, you see friends long dead beckon to you, or lost lovers turned young and new once more as they offer themselves to you again. Voices seem to whisper that the windows hold second chances, opportunities to make things right. You can choose again, they seem to say, but you mustn't look up from the paper in your hands. To do so is to glimpse fully what watches you from outside, and that will leave you at an end truly beyond salvation. Accounts differ as to the hallway's ultimate impossible length. Some say that you must continue to walk until you've glimpsed each of all your possible futures through the windows. Others imply that the closer the time of uniting approaches, the shorter one will find the journey to the end of the hall. If the latter is true, may all who enter find their path long beyond reckoning. You may only look fully away from the paper at the end of the hallway, and even there, you may never look behind you. The door before you leads into a ballroom that, like the hallway, has fallen from its former bright elegance into filth and despair. Move forward into the gloom until the door and all chance of escape are lost behind you. Walk with care. The holder watches you even now. The path forward once passed straight through the center of the room, but the center has not held over the many years and the way has drifted. You may never find your way if it has drifted too far, and you will spend the rest of your unnaturally long life wishing you had given yourself to the window's half-glimpsed temptations. If you're fortunate, however, you will find a single point where the little light remaining fades away completely, and there you must close your eyes and wait, regardless of what should happen next. If you have pleased the holder, you will come to hear a cat's soft purr, and will feel its warmth twining around your feet. You must keep your eyes closed until a voice has asked you, what will you do with them, three times. 
To answer the first or second time will turn the purrs to snarls as the touch of a thousand razored claws pricks your throat. Only after the third and final time may you open your eyes. In front of you will be a woman lying on a bed. As with the rooms that preceded her chamber, she might long ago have been stunningly beautiful, and though she lies naked on her bed, she is nauseatingly fat, her skin pockmarked with bed sores and dead flesh and syphilitic blooms. Hundreds of cats cluster around her. Eventually, one will come to stand expectant at your feet. Speak only to this one, telling him, I will do what I must. He will then teach you the language of the cats, and once you have learned, the others will tell you a secret that was never meant for human ears. You must never reveal it until such a time that you have nothing else in the world to give. Cats are jealous creatures and delight in the pain of those who betray their trust. Their secret is the 16th of 538. I may speak no more of it. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask with no hesitation to visit someone who calls himself the holder of the present. The worker will look at you vaguely. You have to ask him again. Once the worker understands your question, he will lead you through a door into a hallway that looks like it's an extension of hell itself. In this hallway, you will find nothing but darkness and the feeling of unimaginable horror. If you should hear a shrieking coming from the left of you, start running towards the door you just came from, or you will be devoured by demons yelling incomprehensible babble from mouths awash with vile poison. If you should hear a shriek coming from the right of you, start running toward the door that your path leads to. Ignore the worker and keep running until you reach the door. If you should hear another shriek coming from anywhere around you, close your eyes and pray to the gods that your death shall be a swift one. Should you not hear a shriek, just follow the worker until he unlocks the door at the other end of the hallway. He will now ask you to enter, and he will leave. In this room, you will find two things. A naked girl whose left hand is a mangled stump, seemingly torn to shreds by an otherworldly maw, and the rusted keychain she is holding. You must look at the keychain and may not avert your eyes from it. You can say nothing except ask her this one question. Why do they belong together? Now move eyesight to the face of the girl. She will look at you and tell you the most gruesome story of the present, how this present has come to be, and how it is now and eventually how it will be. The girl will slowly move toward you. Do not move and stay still until she is but one footstep away from you. She will put the shredded piece of rot that was once her left hand onto your shoulder. She will then whisper into your ear, The time has come, and now you must die. Do not react to this statement. Just keep staring into her eyes, and eventually you will feel something being pushed into your hand. The keychain is object 17 of 538. Only the keys that are meant for it can be put on it, and all other keys shall be repelled.